When we are eager to please Jehovah by our decisions and our actions, Jehovah takes note. He's well pleased with us. And for us, we find great satisfaction in pleasing our Heavenly Father. You know, I'm reminded of a time a few years ago that my wife and I went to visit my parents. And I asked my father, I said, uh, Dad, I'd like to do work for you around the house. Just give me a list of jobs you'd like me to do. So he did. And on that list, as usual, was wash the car. So I went out and I washed the car. But about halfway through washing the car, I thought, you know, if I wax the car in addition to washing it, oh, that'll be over the top. Dad will love that. Well, sure enough, when I was finished, my dad came out to inspect my work. And, you know, I'll never forget the look on his face. He was so pleased. I got not just the customary good job. He said, great job, son. Really, isn't that what we want to hear from our Heavenly Father? Great job. So what about pleasing Jehovah in the community? How do we do that specifically? Well, let's open our Bibles to Acts chapter 13, and we'll see exactly how we can please Jehovah in the community. Acts 13, and notice verse 47. For Jehovah has commanded us in these words, I have appointed you as a light of nations for you to be a salvation to the ends of the earth. Well, there it is. We specifically please Jehovah in the community by spreading spiritual light. Now, how do we go about doing that? Well, as in everything, we look to our exemplar, Jesus Christ. How did he spread light? We could ask ourselves, what kind of a light was Jesus? Did he do a good job or a great job? And then how specifically did he spread that light? It's interesting in Matthew chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, there in describing Jesus, Matthew says, the people sitting in darkness saw a great light. Yes, Jesus did a great job in spreading light. And specifically, verse 17 shows us how. It says, from that time forward, he went preaching saying, repent, for the kingdom of the heavens has drawn near. So like Jesus, we spread spiritual light by spreading the kingdom hope in our communities. Now, how can we be a great light like Jesus? How can we go from a good job to a great job in spreading this light? Well, our publications have asked us a good question. And here it is for all of us to contemplate. Do I take advantage of every opportunity to give a witness? Now, that question is not designed to pressure us. No, we're thinking about pleasing Jehovah and wanting to please him. So when we think about taking every opportunity, we're talking about taking every opportunity to further please Jehovah as we spread the light, the kingdom message. So how can we do that? in a practical way. Well, we've been encouraged to initiate conversations for the purpose of sharing the kingdom hope. That's a very practical way we can go from good job to great job as we work on this in the community. So how can we do that specifically? Well, we had a very nice uh, article in the 2014 Kingdom Ministry and it gave us very specific ideas on how we could go about initiating these conversations. Here's a few of the suggestions. Number one, be selective. So taking every opportunity to witness doesn't mean we witness to every person. It's every appropriate opportunity. We recognize in informal settings, not everyone wants to engage in conversation. And we see that by means of their body language and so forth. So be selective. That's okay. Secondly, when you're ready for your approach, do the Nehemiah prayer. That's the brief, silent prayer to Jehovah for courage, wisdom, insight in how to reach this person. And then next, start with a simple comment. You know, when Jesus was witnessing to the woman at the well, he didn't start with the kingdom message. He started with, can I have a drink of water? Give me a drink of water. So for us, start with a simple comment. 
commendation if they have children. Your children are so well behaved. My personal favorite, if they have a dog, comment on the dog. Engage them. Get them talking. Now, once you've started that conversation, now look for that opportunity to share the good news, the light of the kingdom. A caution in this, though. Don't rush it. Don't be in a hurry. Let the conversation develop naturally. Let people tell you why they need the kingdom. The kingdom is the solution to every problem that we face. So the more we listen to them, then we can, at the right time, turn it into letting the kingdom light shine. In addition to our preaching work and letting our light shine in the community, Jesus identified another very important way to let our light shine. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, there again on this theme of light, he says, you are the light of the world. So he's talking to us, his disciples. But now in this context, he's not connecting it to the preaching and teaching work as much as something else. Verse 16, he says, let your light shine before men. Now note, so that they may see your fine works. So he's highlighting letting our light shine with regards to our conduct, our Christian conduct. In fact, our conduct often makes a bigger impression than what we say. Now, how can we go from good job to great job in our communities with regards to our conduct? A guiding principle is Matthew 7, verse 12. Many of us know that is the golden rule. Jesus said there to basically treat others as you want to be treated. When we apply that golden rule in our conduct, we're kind, we're compassionate, we're patient, we're understanding, we're considerate, we're loving. Our light shines and people are drawn to that. As an example, there was a Christian couple in Fiji, they were preaching from door to door, and they were inviting ones to the memorial. And uh, as they were preaching, uh, they each had an umbrella. It started to rain, so the husband and wife, they were prepared. They had their umbrellas, but the householder had none. So uh, the husband handed his umbrella to the woman, and he shared with his wife. You know, they finished their conversation, and then later at the memorial, well, the woman was there. Now, she admitted, she said, I don't really remember much about what you said, but it was the way you treated me that moved me to come to this meeting. Yes, they let their light shine by fine conduct, very simply applying Matthew seven twelve, treat others as you want to be treated, and look at the wonderful results from that. Well, to further illustrate the impact of our fine works on the community, We're going to interview Brother Robert Hendricks. He has an experience related to the disaster relief work that took place on Great Abaco Island in the Bahamas after Hurricane Dorian. So Brother Hendricks, let me ask you, how did this relief work affect the community's view of Jehovah's Witnesses and our message? Well, Hurricane Dorian devastated the little island of Great Abaco. In fact, thousands were killed. It uh, leveled the Kingdom Hall. It made the island almost unrecognizable. uh, And it it hurt a lot of our brothers and sisters. They lost their homes. And so, of course, the branch began, commenced disaster relief work there. And it had a tremendous impact on that community. In fact, everyone in the island knew who Jehovah's Witnesses were. Many of them said, why doesn't my church treat me like Jehovah's Witnesses treat their people? And it led to 25 to 30 Bible studies being conducted just by the relief workers alone. And the meetings, of course, were were packed at the Relief Center. Additionally, the media was very kind to us, and that was unusual for the Bahamian media. In fact, one report, uh, one letter, I'd just like to read just a portion of it, it said this, I have been impressed by the work done by Jehovah's Witnesses who quickly mobilized members of their organization. For whilst repairs generally are proceeding at a snail's pace, The witnesses have successfully repaired homes and their kingdom hall all through the unselfish work of volunteers. Amazing. This, of course, led to great experiences in the community. Many just thanked us for not only rebuilding homes, but believe it or not, rebuilding the kingdom hall. 
because it was the only house of worship that was rebuilt on the island. And they even thanked us for sharing scriptures with them because they hadn't heard scriptures for, for months because their pastors had left the island and not come back. Uh, in fact, the business community also was impressed. One lumberyard owner said this to our brother. He says, you know, I trust you guys. And then he handed the keys to the lumber yard, to the brother, and said, when you need something, go get it. And then he said, just let me know what you took, and we'll go from there. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, another business owner, he donated the site work for the parking lot at the Kingdom Hall. And he said this. He said, I was moved to do it by how you guys feel about your friends. Clearly, the Kingdom Hall, the work, became beacons of light to onlookers. Uh, and brought glory to Jehovah in an amazing way. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that experience. It really highlights the benefits of pleasing Jehovah in our community. To further illustrate the benefits of pleasing Jehovah in our community, let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 12 together. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 12. And what we're interested in here is two specific benefits that come from letting our light shine by means of our fine works. 1 Peter 2.12, we're encouraged, number one here, maintain your conduct fine among the nations. So we, we have to continue to give attention to our fine works, our conduct. Now notice the benefits. So that they so that when they accuse you of being wrongdoers, they may be eyewitnesses of your fine works, and as a result, glorify God in the day of his inspection. Did you see the two benefits that come? When people see our fine conduct, they may be moved to praise Jehovah. They may be moved to lend a listening ear when they haven't done so in the past. And the second benefit is our fine conduct disproves unfair criticism, bringing further praise to Jehovah, his name, his organization. When we please Jehovah in our personal life, our family life, our congregation, and the community, we're fulfilling Jehovah's purpose for us. It's interesting, in Ecclesiastes 12, there, it says that the whole obligation of man is to fear the true God and keep his commandments. Yes, fear Jehovah. Be, have reverential awe for Jehovah. We're interested in pleasing him, not disappointing him. And as we do that, as that's our motivation, we keep his commandments because we see the joy it brings him and the joy it brings us. So in review, how can we please Jehovah in all aspects of our life? Jehovah is pleased when our decisions and actions show we are eager to follow his guidance in everything we do, every aspect of our life, our personal life, our family life, the congregation, and in the community. When we are eager for Jehovah's approval, we are motivated to please him, to look for ways to further please him, to go from that good job to great job. Having Jehovah's approval brings us deep satisfaction and joy. So as we please Jehovah in all aspects of our life, picture in your mind's eye, Jehovah, his smile of approval upon you. Hear his voice say to you, good job. No, great job.